What's going on guys? I want to say thank you to the people who bought training and thank you to the people who are about to buy training and shout out to the Nerd Tribe. The elites want you broke and poor. I'm about to give you the facts. Let me go ahead and cook a little bit. You know, with my new found way of doing things, I don't mention YouTubers names. I don't start any YouTube beefs, but I was watching a YouTuber who's in the same space as I am talking about the elites want you broke. They want you poor and the elites want to take advantage of you. All right. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, those are the elite billionaires. There's like about a hundred of these guys, about a hundred, with literally the people with hundreds of billions, that might be 20 people on the planet. And then the majority of the billionaire class is 10 billion or less. That's the majority of the billionaire class. And I was listening to him talking about how the elites want to keep you broke. It's kind of us against them. And he put out some information about himself that he was in real estate and he got out of real estate. I'm about to say something to you that I actually know people who are in real estate. I know a, what would be considered a small real estate investor. She has about 22 houses. And I know someone who has apartment complexes. I know these people. And the person who's a, to me, is pretty savvy, um, pretty smart. She has 22 houses. She's been doing real estate for the last 15, 17 years, which included the last downturn. That's kind of when she really got into real estate, when the market was doo-doo. And I've literally watched her go out and buy these, you know, because her thing is she likes to buy trash property. She likes to buy stuff that's messed up, needs work, because she can get a really good deal on it. And I have watched this person who's in real estate who was in real estate during the last crash, I would assume her net worth on the 22 houses, because after 22 houses, half are paid off. So I would estimate her net worth to be five, five million, eight million. Because we kind of talk, but we never really, you know, but just going off those 10 houses or 11 houses that are paid for, that's three to four million. So I would say collectively her net worth five, seven, eight, maybe even more. And I see these people on YouTube who will come up and say I was in real estate. And this guy mentioned that he got out, he sold everything. And right now we're in the position where we're gonna see who's strategist who's really savvy who can run the business because believe it or not there are people right now in the current real estate market who are getting rich right now people are still buying houses even though interest rates are eight and three eight point three percent people are still buying houses i feel that people will still be buying houses when interest rates get to ten percent I would think what, what would tank the market is the interest rates get to 15 to 17%. I think that would tank the market and there's a chance we can get there. But I hear all of these people putting out this information based upon their personal failures. Once again, I know people, um, my friend who was in the apartment, he was in the apartment business during the great crash. I know people who weathered the bad markets and still made money. So for someone, okay, once again, I know people
Okay, once again, I know people who made money in bad markets. And guess what? Right now, with crazy housing appreciation and what's going on in the market, there are people right now who are making money in the real estate market. Now, one of the things I am doing is looking for the failed Airbnb market on Zillow. And I literally every week I find new and new houses that were on Airbnb and they placed on Zillow as a long-term rental. Now, here's the issue with that. Just like I'm not starting any YouTube beefs or anything like that, um, I don't think this guy is savvy or sophisticated because here's the thing. With YouTube, YouTube is a megaphone. With YouTube, if you can get enough traction behind you, you can make a lot of money, whether you can make a lot of money off YouTube. And I feel that this individual who's putting out this message that the elite is, or the reason that you're poor, um, I got something to say that's going to be very harsh and it's going to be very hard for some of you to hear. The reason that you are poor is you. And the reason that you're poor and don't have any money is the decisions that you made 10 years ago. How do I know this? I used to be poor. I used to work a regular job and then I descended into being homeless and working at Labor Ready and working at the labor pool. Um, and for a long, long time, I was angry. I wanted to blame someone because I was very, very angry. And part of this anger stemmed from the fact that I did not want to accept a fundamental truth. The reason that I was in the situation that I was in was me. And I didn't really want to take that strong cocaine. I didn't want to really look in the mirror and go like, you are the reason that you're here. And this message that there's this group of elite billionaires in the room who are deciding your economic fate is ludicrous. But I feel, because this guy has a pretty large following and the people are not economically sophisticated to see through the bullshit. Because I see through it, because when I look at his channel, I don't see someone who was successful. And these channels who are pushing buying gold and silver, I am not buying gold and silver. For gold and silver to come play to come into the play economically, we're talking about a walking dead scenario. We're talking about things being really, really bad. We can have another depression. We can have unemployment of 30%. And that still would not bring about buying gold and silver. I do believe if we had another depression and we had unemployment of 30%, that gold and silver prices would skyrocket. And if you know how to play, play that game, if you bought it as an investment and want to sell that, that could make you some money. But to buy gold and silver as a hedge against inflation is kind of crazy to me. It's just kind of crazy to me. But I feel that the messaging that the elites are the reason that you're poor, because what got us in this situation? Economic policy. Economic policy. And the CARES Act. When the CARES Act came out, I said it was not a good idea to give people money for doing nothing. I'm on record saying that. And I'm also on record saying that, hey, you're getting this enhanced unemployment. 
you're getting these direct payments, you should skill up, you should level up, you should take advantage of this time to get new skill sets, to position yourself for greater opportunities in the future. Some people listened, most people didn't. They were having sex, playing video games, smoking weed. So the CARES Act and the economic policy of the United States is what created the rapid appreciation of real estate. Because let's say, let's just go back in time and say we didn't do the CARES Act and we let the chips fall where the chips would fall. We would have had a lot of homes in foreclosure and a lot of homes on the market. There wouldn't have been no short inventory. The inventory would have been quite large and that would have kept the price of real estate from skyrocketing. That would have kept the price from rent of going nuts. But the reason that we are where we are from an economic standpoint is economic and political policy. Not because billionaires want you to be broke and poor in the struggle. And how do I know this? I got money and I never took advantage of anyone. I didn't lie to anyone. At one point, I was giving away free courses. And this is, this is one of the things that, it still bothers me to this day, that 95% of the people who signed up for those free courses did absolutely nothing with them, nothing with them. And this is where, once again, if you're poor, broke, disenfranchised in the United States of America, it's your fault. I know that's strong cocaine, I know it's critically harsh, and I'm gonna tell you why. I used to be you. I went from a period of, you know, I got reset years ago. I went from a living in an apartment to living in my car to living in a boarding house. And I was angry, I was very, very angry. I wanted someone to blame, and I was angry for a good 15 months. Then one morning, I had this look in the mirror and I said, the reason that you are here is you did not prepare. And once I started to take full accountability, full personal responsibility, this is when my life started to change. Uh, once I got that boarding house and I started selling office furniture, one of the things I would do is for the customers that I didn't get the deal, I would go and I'd say, hey, May I have a few moments of your time? Please tell me what I did wrong. I'm not gonna beat you up, I'm not gonna cuss you out. I just wanna know what I did wrong so I can get better as a salesperson. That right there was a game changer for me because I went to these people and they were like, well, this happened and this other company did this and I took notes. I was sitting there and one, one lady I was talking to, she said, you're actually taking notes. I was like, yeah, I want to get really good at this. And you know, she said, I have a friend, I think they're moving. She called and put me in touch with her friend and the company was moving and I actually got the deal. See, personal responsibility and personal accountability it's not sexy, it's not hip, it's not cool, but it's required. And once I started to take 150% personal responsibility of my life, my life transformed. I never ever, and this is something else, a long time ago, I used to be a hater. I would see someone in a nice Mercedes or BMW, and I was like, look at them, look at them, they think they all that. That was me. This person driving their car, living their life, they ain't thinking nothing about me. But me, because I felt inferior, I felt insecure, I knew that I was not where I needed to be in life. I was a hater. I was a hater. Because I I'm gonna tell you something, and I'm I'm ashamed to admit this. Michael Jordan, I used to hate on Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan was so good, so great, so awesome. I used to hate on Michael Jordan. Oh, he ain't that good. Michael Jordan, arguably, is the best basketball player to ever play the game. And I'm ashamed to admit that I was such a wet, moist little man that I was hating on this guy because I had no success in life, none whatsoever. 
And one of the things that I had to do, and this was part of my transformation in that boarding house, is when I would see someone with a nice car, I had to check myself. I couldn't go into that. Well, they, I was like, that person probably worked really hard and they deserve that car. I had to change my internal dialogue. And instead of being a hater, I became a congratulator. Oh, I would see someone. I remember um, I was going to church and this young guy, really young guy, he drove up in this big boy Benz and I said, congratulations, you're probably a hardworking man and you, you work really hard to get that car. And he said, you're different. He said, most people just hate on me. He said, I own the moving company. And you know, we talked and we became friends. See, this, once again, I feel that this notion that the elites want to keep you poor, this us against them is a very dangerous message. And like, like I said, this guy, I've watched him, I've saw the con, because see, I listen to folks. When I listen, like, I personally know folks who were making money during the real estate crash. So this guy, he got out because he didn't know have the skills to make any money. I listen to stuff like that. I'm like, oh, you couldn't cut it. Oh, you couldn't make it. All right, that's what I listen to. And I feel that this message, and I'm getting ready to give you some more strong cocaine. If you are a man in the United States of America in 2022, and you have to hop on a plane to find female companionship, the problem is you. Are women crazy? Absolutely. Are women hard to deal with? Absolutely. Are there some trash women out there? Absolutely. Is that all of them? No. My girlfriend is a little crazy. I know this. I used to have this saying, all women are crazy. You just have to find one whose level of craziness you can deal with. My girlfriend, she, she can be absolutely nuts sometimes. I love her to death. I know what I'm dealing with. I am not even, I wouldn't even be surprised at anything she does because I know who she is. And I accept her for who she is. Because there's the craziness and then there's the upside. The upside is like, wow, this is amazing. This, this makes the craziness look like a little bitty thing that it really is. But if you are a man and you are struggling to find female companionship, the problem ain't women, homie. It's you. It's you. And one of the reasons that I know it's you is because I, I was out here dating. I'm an average looking dude. I've been able to pull off remarkable things. You wanna know what? Because I had the balls to approach women. That's why my Craigslist protocols and I was dating so well online because I really was crushing it in real life. I knew how to walk up to a woman and say, oh my God, you're gorgeous. I know you're busy, but what's your name? What's your number? And I wanna take you out at some point in the future. That was my pitch. If you were verbatim to use those same words and approach five women a week, one per day, taking weekends off, your dating life would transform. Most of you aren't gonna do it because most of you are scared. Alan Roger Curry and I had this discussion in the video. The fear of rejection is so deep that you won't do it. And once again, just like if you're suffering from female companionship, which to me is crazy in 2022. 2022, because yeah, women are nuts and all this other stuff, but bruh, it's you. And also economically, if you are poor, in the United States in 2022, it's your fault. It's not your daddy's fault. It's not your mama's fault. If you were a child and you grew up poor, that's on your parents. But if at the age of 20, if you're 30 years old and you're still poor, that's on you. That's on you. And so many people do not want to take that level of personal accountability and want to fall off into these echo chambers 
of commiseration versus actually trying to straighten out themselves, actually build and build their lives. Because I'm getting ready to do some new training called the Orders of Operation. And um, one of the things that I wanna do is take people through the journey that I went on. Because I have a feeling that my content in the future is gonna start winning because I've noticed that the charlatan, or in my video, the donkeys of YouTube, that a lot of these people are not getting the views they used to get because the economy is getting bad. People are looking for real solutions and um, they're finding out that these charlatans don't have any real solutions. They're seeing that. So once again, you know, I, I just feel that this message of the elites, you know, Jeff Bezos, Lauren Sanchez, his girlfriend, I think is a sexier, bigger breasted version of what he had. He just upgraded. I don't think Jeff Bezos is sitting around thinking about how can I keep these people poor? Now, he was the CEO of Amazon before he stepped down. And there's a lot of people who are working at Amazon.com because the pace is fast pace. It's hard work and literally people will, they're used to people showing up for one shift and quitting. I'm gonna tell you something, years and years ago, I used to work at a FedEx hub in Ellenwood. My first month there, I lost 20 pounds because once you go there, once you step onto the conveyor belt, you're moving. The minute you clock in and get on that, you're moving until you clock out. It's fast paced, it's hard work. And same thing at UPS. And these companies are used to people coming in and like, I can't do this and just walking out. And I feel, and once again, this is gonna be very, very harsh, that the average American is lazy, entitled, and doesn't wanna work hard. When I was a kid, I couldn't wait to get a job. I couldn't wait, I wanted to work. Now you have everyone who's rent seeking. This is why the crypto space, a lot of people come for me on my views, on my thesis on the crypto space. And I'm getting ready to say something to all of you so-called business owners who are investing in stocks and cryptos and real estate you ain't never seen no real money. If you saw real money, you wouldn't be doing all that investing. You, you ain't never seen no real money. I've literally put up a video, of my thesis on crypto. It's like, I don't know how this is getting my recommendation. I am a business owner. Once again, how do I know this? Statistically, the average business owner makes $71,000 a year. Statistically. so. Playing the averages, I know that someone who is like, I'm a business owner beating on their chest. In the comments, they ain't making no money. And because here's the thing I lived in zip code 30327. Google it, Google the average home price. I have lived around wealth, I have lived around old wealth. And the, the, what I saw, how these people behave is radically different than the cash is trash, invest everything crowd. Meet Kevin and Graham Stephan. This is gonna be the first down market they've ever experienced in their lives. So once again, if you want to be successful, and I'm getting ready to get into this. When I was going through the process of straightening myself out, taking extreme personal accountability is quite helpful. It's hard. Like when I was going to those people that I got the deals, 
I remember there was this one guy who was particularly difficult and I had, because my rule was I would ask everyone that I lost a deal and this guy was hard to deal with and I didn't want to call him, I didn't want to talk to him, but I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and reach out and see what I did wrong. And I called the guy and I said, hey, this is Glendon. And he says, yeah, well, we went with some, we went with some, I, said, I know that, that's what I'm calling. I want to know what did I do that was wrong. I'm not going to beat you up. I'm not going to be a pest. I just want to know exactly what did I do that was wrong. And this guy who was really difficult and hard to deal with, he says, really? He says, what are you doing for lunch? So he took me to lunch. He took me to lunch and he listed out, well, this happened, this happened, we weren't happy with this. We weren't. He literally gave me so many things that I was unaware that I was doing. And I literally took notes and on my next sales call, the things he had mentioned I did not do, and the things he mentioned that I should do, that I should do, I started doing. And to this day, he and I are still friends. And you know what we're friends? He's an old man right now. I think he's like 80 something. This was like, you know, he was 50s, late 50s, 60s. He, he's like, it is rare the person who will seek wisdom and to learn how to get better. And you know, it, it was real interesting. So I know I gave you guys a lot with this. I gave you a lot of that strong cocaine, but this is the reality. If you want to stay on this paradigm that the elites are the reason that you are poor and you don't want to take any personal responsibility, you're going to stay poor. You're going to stay in the same situation that you're currently in. It's not going to get any better. It's not going to be, it's just, it's going to keep getting worse and worse and worse because one of the things that I'm doing, because if you notice during my break, I've changed a little bit. I've changed how I come to YouTube. I'm getting ready. I did a live stream on B-School for Hustlers. There'll be more live streams. Uh, I'm gonna start posting more on a corporate game. I'm, I'm, I'm really working hard to be of service to my viewers. I wanna give you guys accurate, helpful conversations and information, tips, pointers, tricks. And I feel in the future that this is going to make my channel explode. And I just got to stay the course. Because if you notice, every video, I thank the people who bought training. I thank the nerd tribe. And once again, the comments are getting better. I actually put up a few videos where the spam bots didn't even hit in there. I don't know what brings them. But I really do appreciate the people who support me because I can remember what it was like sleeping in that room in the West End, not having any money, not having any access. I was getting pussy. I was getting pussy. But I wasn't living the life that I wanted to live. I wasn't um, where I wanted to be. I wasn't doing what I needed to do. And one of the things that I want to outline to you guys is in the future, we're going, you know, there's going to be more posting on B-School for Hustlers because I, I get a lot of this. This is the doom and gloom channel. All right. Last October, I put out this video about me commiserating with R. Kelly and talking about my sexual exploits. If you do not know who I am, and if you don't know about all my channels, it's because you're not looking. There's B-School for Hustlers, 100% business content. I don't talk about celebrity. Well, I talked about, you know, Kanye, because Kanye was a business lesson. To lose 1.5 billion and counting, that's a business lesson. But normally I stay away from um, entrepreneurs, 
I stay away from celebs and stuff. I, I really don't do a lot of talking about Omni and the Hellcat. Um, what I want you guys to understand is with YouTube, messaging is everything. Uh, there was a video that I came across where this guy was doing Instacart and he decided to pay this homeless guy 60 bucks per hour to help him shop Instacart. And the guys, you know, I went ahead and analyzed his channel. He's been on YouTube five years. And this video blew up, but it was a very feel-good video. But here's, here's the thing, here's the thing. If I was to go out and make videos talking to homeless people and trying to employ them, those videos would do extremely well because the average person is kind-hearted, generous, and nice. The average person. And I did not comment on the video because that video has 81,000 views. Um, he's probably made anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000, depending on what his CPM is. So the money that he spent helping this homeless guy was nothing compared to the money he made from YouTube. And that's one of the things that I have to get better at is understanding what makes money on YouTube while still being truthful, while still being myself and still being holding myself to a high level of accountability because um, those videos went, they went. And one of the things that I really see because this guy, you know, I'm not mentioning any names, his channel, he, he, he literally gets 80 to 100,000 views per video. And it's a different demographic. That, that's key, because, you know, as uh, I've talked about before, YouTube has changed. When I came to YouTube, 90% of my audience was white. And what YouTube now is doing to black creators is pushing a black audience on those creators simply because they're black. I think that is somewhat racist because I, as a creator, want to get the biggest reach I can. I want black folks, I want white folks, I want Asian folks. And I'm really working on that because this is what, like, I did a live stream the other day and once again, uh, there's been nothing but business content, nothing controversial over there. I had someone, I had to block, not once, not two, but three times because he kept coming back to be a pest. This is what you get in the black community. Weak, moist, jealous men who don't want to take personal accountability. Because, you know, I'm about to say something. I get my dick sucked whenever I want it sucked. I don't ever have these issues with the women I date. I've never been in a relationship where I couldn't get sex when I wanted it. I had one girlfriend, she would be mad at me. And I, I like reach over and grab her breast and she roll over and give me the pussy. And she could be mad. I've never had those problems. So this is one of the reasons that I do not understand the whining and complaining in the manosphere because you've got guys in the manosphere who are married who are talking about you shouldn't get married because they're doing it for the two. They're doing it for the two. And this is, what's this, this guy that I'm talking about, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not making forty dollars to $50,000 per month from his YouTube channel. And that kind of money from doing something as you like YouTube is amazing. It's amazing. And he actually, and this this is something I see. A lot of people are doing something. Once they start making that YouTube money, like you, there's multiple strippers or uh, former strippers, I should say. There are former strippers on YouTube. These are girls who used to be strippers, and they came to YouTube and they start making that YouTube money. Christina Villalagres super cute um i don't even think she's stripping anymore this girl's making 
70 to $80,000 per month. I think she's under 25. That's some sick money. That's some sick money. And once you, you know, I mentioned this, once you start getting this YouTube money, it makes it hard for you to do something else. You get addicted to the AdSense. I mean, frankly, this is one of the reasons I had such a high level of disgust with the car rental business. Um, if I had exited the storage auction business and got in the car rental business, if that was a thing back then, I probably wouldn't have made half of the videos that I made. I would have made the videos about the car being stolen, but because when I, when I was in the storage auction mode, I was used to dealing with a certain type of clientele. And now that I have been full-time YouTube since 2009, there's just certain things I will not deal with because, you know, in this new business, and I'm not, I'm, I'm intentionally not telling you what it is because I want to get it shaped up. I want to get some things worked out before I tell you what it is, tell you how much money I'm investing. And I, I want to work some stuff out. I need to do some more research because I will never ever do what I did with the car rental business. I would never ever do that again. That was a learning lesson for you guys. It was a learning lesson for me. I will never ever do that again. I would never ever get into business like that without, if I can't vet it the way that I'm vetting this business, uh, I wouldn't, I won't touch it. But I'm, I'm getting ready to do a new business. I'm gonna tell you why I'm getting ready to do a new business. I got something that I'm, that I'm, that's gonna be part of the corporate game. The corporate game consists of the intellectual property school, the art of profit school, and the corporate game school. Um, I want to indoctrinate people in my thesis, and I'm getting ready to say something very bold. I believe if you take my course and do the work, in 10 years, you can be a millionaire. I firmly believe it because literally three years on the YouTube, I became a millionaire. First time ever. And I'm going to tell you something. When you get money, you really don't give a damn what other people are doing. You just really, that's why I find it so ludicrous that these billionaires, these folks who have the ability to buy private planes and yachts and stuff are just sitting around thinking about how to keep poor people poor. I'm like question to you if you had a hundred million dollars how often would you think about poor people one of the reasons that I study the poor is it gives me content that's why I study the poor that, that's what keeps this channel going on the average American but if I wasn't doing this YouTube channel I wouldn't be thinking about poor people I would be thinking about poor people and the advantage that hey there's a lot of poor people crimes about to spike I need to protect myself I need to make sure they have security protocols and stuff in place so people don't break into my house. I'd be thinking about it from that vantage point, but I wouldn't be really sitting around thinking a lot about poor people. And because this is the Institute of Economic Thought, I think about poor people as a, I study poor people because it comes back to the same place each time. The reason people are poor, I'm not talking about children, you're a child and your mom and dad are poor that's not your fault but if you're 30 years old in the United States of America and you're still poor that's your fault you along the line have made some bad decisions you cannot convince me otherwise this is why this whole the elites are trying to keep you I'm just sitting there like that's just some bullshit that's just some bullshit but once again it keeps this YouTube channel going because a lot of people want to believe that someone other than themselves is keeping them broke and poor. Because, you know, once again, it's not an easy journey to start taking extreme personal accountability and personal responsibility. It's not easy. It's not easy. But it's necessary for you to grow, for you to get to the next level. 
And that's what I want you folks to do. I want you to grow, get to the next level. And I'm going to, once again, what's gonna happen in the corporate game, first of all, the first stage of the corporate game is we gotta straighten out your personal finance life. That is critical. And there's not a lot of emphasis on that. It's the emphasis that you're gonna get the money. Here's the thing. If you're making $30,000 a year and you're tricking off that 30,000, guess what's going to happen at 300,000? You're going to be tricking off on 300,000. And once again, that me getting that part-time job and saving all that money is 50% of the reason that I'm successful. Money management. Money management. I just paid myself another distribution out of my company. Uh, I'll get that Monday. I just paid myself another distribution. If you want to get paid what you feel that you're worth, start a business. Because, you know, there's still November and December. I may get myself another distribution. Because, like I said, I'm getting ready to do a lot of different stuff. I'm getting ready to put out a lot of stuff. I'm getting ready to start some coaching program. I'm getting ready to do a lot. Because once again, I need to focus on the people who buy into the message. And once again, I'm gonna be running ads talking about you can become a millionaire in 10 years. And this is going to dissuade anyone who feels that they can, you know, like this whole Carl Renfeld, he became a billionaire from being a cashier in four years. It's complete and other bullshit. But people want to believe that because they want to believe that it can happen to them. So, yeah, I do believe you take my training, you do the work, you start a business, you work hard, you can become a millionaire in 10 years, which is extremely quick. Extremely quick. Jeff Bezos became a billionaire in seven years. Extremely quick. Extremely quick. So, one, well, once again, I'm getting ready to start selling some stuff. I'm getting ready to actually put more content on B-School for Hustlers, more content on the corporate game, more conversations, more live streams. It's, it's, we, we're about to get lit up in here. So if you want this new training, which is going to start in November, just go ahead. Uh, I think I have the link below. I'll be in the first comment because we're getting ready to do some new stuff and indoctrinate people into my methodology because I don't feel that I'm extraordinary. I do feel that I'm extremely hardworking. And if you follow the plan, you can become a millionaire in 10 years. But using the quick way, which is to start a business, um, you know, once you get to the benchmark of 250K, if you want to invest in the stock market or real estate, you can because you have the capital to do so. But once again, this, this is the new program. This is the new plan. So if you want to be, if you want, if you want to break off a piece of that, just go ahead and sign up for the corporate game. Uh, I've removed everything else because that's the thing I'm going to be focused on. And I'm going to be adding some more stuff to the corporate game to get that all snazzy that up to speed there's a lot of stuff that is coming so let's roll off into this wonderful beam footage to let you know what's coming what's going on my name is glendon cameron and i want to introduce you to the corporate game what is the corporate game the corporate game is a collegiate level educational portal that will teach you how to have your best version of your life. I got a question. What would you do if you had the money that you needed to have the life that you wanted to have? And for the average American, an additional $3,000 per month makes a huge, huge difference. So this is the collegiate level corporate game teaching you things about business money corporate structures business credit all of that plus a lot more now here is the deal 
you can start a business. You can do it with the right level of training and the right level of execution. And here's the thing that you have to understand. Starting this business is going to take time. I know that we are in a situation where every day you're hit over the head with information saying that you can take this course, you can hack this, and you can literally quit your job in 30 days. This isn't that. You can do it, but it's gonna take time. And one of the things is, and this is something that I never hear anyone talking about, is that you have to change who you are to go ahead and to set up a situation where you can become a corporate citizen. Now, what's a corporate citizen? A corporate citizen is a person through a job or a combination of businesses that makes $250,000 per year. At this level, you can get rich. You can become a millionaire within 10 years following this blueprint. And that's what we give you in the corporate game what it is and how to play. So if you wanna sign up, if you want to be a millionaire within the next 10 years, go ahead, sign up for the corporate game. The link is in the first comment.